Hey guys, this is Alex. Uh, I wanted to show you the Pro Tools session for my Starline cover I did with Logan. And basically, I'll just take you through each of the percussion elements and show you uh, how, like, just show you how we got each sound. So first of all is the fist hitting the door. Um, here's the EQ curve for that. It's just a dip in the low mids here just to kind of clean it up. Uh, and then as far as the compression settings on that, uh, pretty heavy ratio, four. Uh, it's digging into the threshold quite a bit. Uh, and then there's some makeup gain on it. And you can see the attack and release right there. So I'll let you hear the fist hitting the door. So that's that. Uh, in combination with that, we used a wooden spoon hitting a couch pillow for the uh, other half of the bass drum because I didn't feel like the uh, fist on the door really captured the essence of what a bass drum needs to be. So for the EQ for the pillow, uh, uh, you know, you can see it right here, another dip in the low mids. And I bumped up the highs quite a bit just to get some more attack because I felt like uh, we needed a little bit more attack in the in the whole bass drum itself. So here's the pillow, the wooden spoon hitting the pillow. As you can tell, it has a lot more attack in it, and you know it's tighter and punchier, and it gives you the initial attack of the bass drum, while the door gives you more of the body of the drum. Uh, next down the list is one time in the song we lit a match and I kind of wanted to use that as like a symbol like a symbol crashing and then kind of fading out but the match had this weird decay where it was like it fizzled and then it kind of like crescendoed into a bigger fizzle and I didn't want that that's the opposite of what a symbol does really so I took this the signal here and what you see right here is a decay curve just you know putting in for a uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a basically writing in a decrescendo, you can draw this curve for the volume. Uh, so basically, I put an EQ on it. It looks like I took most of everything below uh, a thousand hertz just out of there. And as far as the compression settings, pretty heavy again. Um, you know, all the drum stuff was was compressed pretty heavily. Um, here, I'll just leave this compressor up, compressor up and let you hear what the match sounded like with the decay curve and everything on it. So yeah, that was the match. It was only used once. And all this stuff, we actually just used the exact same audio sample copied and placed on the grid. I mean, we didn't sit there and like play the entire song out on any of this stuff. In the video, it looks like we did, but that makes for a more interesting video if, if it looks like you're actually playing it. But in actuality, we just kind of, you know, we hit everything once and then looped it, basically. So next on the list is claps. Uh, Logan and I clapped probably about five times and layered all those claps on top of each other uh, shifted them a little bit just to give a, a disparity of timing and I panned a few of them left and right slapped a compressor on all of that and you know this is the sum of I don't know about ten different pairs of hands clapping um, so yeah here's the claps I felt like that gave some, it gave some like body to the snare drum that the uh, the other part of the snare drum really didn't have. It, it had a lot of attack, but it didn't really have uh, body to it. And that's what I'm going to play for you now, which is a wooden spoon just uh, hitting a stovetop burner right in the middle of like the metal part. And uh, nothing was actually done to this clip. It's just the raw file, so here it is.
what I'll do actually is I'll um, I'm not sure what this doorknob is right here I think we ended up not using that so I'll hide that but um, I'll let you hear the claps and the burner together to form what I basically made into a snare drum All right, so that's the snare portion. And um, for like an open-ish hi-hat sound, what we ended up using was the same wooden spoon, just hitting some loosely held tin foil. You'll see it in the video. Um, we I put an EQ curve on it, you know, everything below like 600 hertz or so is gone. Because you really don't need that for a hi-hat sound. So here's the Here's the hi-hat, tinfoil stuff. Good enough. All right, and for like a, like a closed hi-hat kind of sound, we used a kitchen knife hitting against the side of a faucet. And um, here's the EQ for that. Not quite as drastic as the, uh, the tinfoil but there really wasn't as much frequency information in that little sound to get rid of. So here is the knife hitting the faucet. So yeah, that's all the drums. Uh, I put all of that into a drums bus and compressed it. And not, not a huge, ratio there is just like a two and a half to one ratio um, just to kind of tighten everything up a little bit and moving on to the bottles we recorded all the bottles all, every pitch we recorded just once um, and I put it all the raw files I don't remember where I put the raw files but it was just you know uh, I guess eight different clips of the G major scale and I copied and pasted those into what you see here to make the various chords in the song. It's I just did you know the major triads, different inversions of uh, you know whatever notes we had. Uh, I guess there's the one chord which is G G major. There's a D major and C major, and also an E minor. And I think that's it. Those are the only four chords we really had to make. Just various inversions of that, and. That was the bottles, and then of course you had guitar and vocals. And I'm not sure what this is down here. Oh yeah, the actual other guitar part. Um, so yeah, here's the vocals. Uh, and that really seems like that's the entire session. So I hope you got some insight as to how we actually did this. There's a lot easier ways to sample a percussion like this instead of having to manually copy and paste every time. But uh, we had limited resources at our disposal that night. I didn't have my entire setup. But um, as you can see, there's a lot of copying and pasting going on. But, you know, it, the song is fairly repetitive and it has its sections that you could copy from, you know, chorus to chorus or verse to verse. But yeah, so that's the basic gist of everything. And that's that's really all I have to say. All right. Thanks for watching.